Hey guys, um, so I'm an idiot and totally didn't realize that my camera was facing or angled a little too far down. So basically like the top of my head gets cut off in this video. Um, but I was feeling a little lazy and didn't really want to refilm 20 minutes worth of stuff. Um, so that's my bad. I'm just going to throw in this little disclaimer at the beginning of the this this video. Um, so hopefully it's not too distracting. Um, promise I will get better at it. Uh, like I said, you know, this is my first time doing the YouTube, so I'm not really sure what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, practice make perfect. I will get better and hopefully you will still enjoy my video. <laughs> hey guys, it's Kayla. Um, I'm back to do the uh, mid-year book freakout tag, which like I totally realize it's past mid-year, but I figured, you know, since I'm just starting a book two channel, this seems like a really great way to kind of catch you guys up on what I've been reading this year, which I think I've read something like 170 books this year. So, you know, it's a, it's a pretty good pace. Um, but yeah, so I figure kind of let you know what I've been been doing and introduce you to some of my reading tastes. So let's just jump right in, shall we? Okay, so uh, question one is the best book you've read so far this year. And this is a really hard choice. I've read quite a few five star books this year. Um, so I have six to show you. Uh, so yeah, so the uh, first one I'll show you is Empire of Silence by Christopher Rocchio. Um, so this is like kind of like a, an epic sci-fi. Like if you've read Name of the Wind, it reminds me a lot of the same sort of story or like writing style um, where the, like, the writing is really beautiful. Uh, and it, this one uh, covers the main character, Hadrian, or Hadrian, I think it's Hadrian, um, as he like grows up and uh, it starts off by saying like, um, Hadrian is the sun eater and like he's killed, uh, I think it, this is, Gadadin is the name of the sun or whatever that he killed and he like is responsible for a mass genocide of this alien race. So, you know, it kind of starts off with a bang and we kind of, it's kind of like he is reflecting on his life and this is just like the first part of his life growing up and there's, you know, some gladiator bits, which is always exciting. Um, I love that, that sort of trope. Um, well, yeah, it's it's a really good book. I highly recommend it. Um, and then the second book I'm going to show you is Kill the Queen by Jennifer Estep. Um, so this actually is also <laughs> has a gladiator component. Um, so the main character, Everly, who I think goes by Evie, if I'm remembering correctly, um, is in line for the throne, but like distantly uh, in, in line for the throne. Um, the royal family gets massacred, so she goes into hiding and joins a like gladiator troop. Um, and there's like there's a pretty interesting magic system in it. Um, and you know it's, there are there's some romance. So if you're looking for like a fantasy romance book, I recommend this one for sure. Um, I thought it was really quite excellent. Um, and then another like romancy book is Polaris Rising by Jesse Mihalik. Mihalik. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce her last name. Um, but this is actually like a sci-fi book. Um, so she, the main character, Ada, is, I think, also in like a pretty high, like powered um, political family. Uh, so she runs away uh, because she doesn't want to like participate in this arranged marriage. Um, she meets a uh, Marcus Locke known as the devil of Fornax Zero um, in prison. And he's like, you know, rumored to be pretty, pretty bad, but um, they end up joining up and he like protects her and, you know, turns out to not be so bad. Obviously, you know, there is some romance in there. So it's, it, I think it's pretty steamy from what I remember, but I really liked this book. Um, okay. And then another book, uh, The Invisible Library by Genevieve Cogman. So this has actually been out for quite some time, but I just jumped on the train here this year. Um, so it's a, it's the Invisible Library series um, where there's like this, it's a, I think probably urban fantasy, um, but there's like this library uh, that can jump between alternate worlds and basically they're just trying to collect uh, unique works from each world. Like in some worlds, perhaps Dickens wrote this extra novel or something like that, you know, so they're trying to collect all of those. Um, there's dragons, there's fae, uh, you know, it's... That's really interesting. Um, I think there's five books out in the series so far. So if you're looking for a good urban fantasy book series, pick this one up for sure. Um, the next one I will show you is Empire of Sand by Tasha Suri. Uh, so this is like sort of, I guess an Arabian type 
Arabian Nights type fantasy. I'm not. Um, but there's main character, I believe, is can like, yeah, manipulate the dreams of the gods to alter the shape of the world. So she's kind of, you know, trying to hide this power. Um, but ultimately, the Empire, you know, does figure out that she can have this, this magic ability and they try to I think they do actually en enslave her. So um, she's trying to break free and trying to like you know, free her tribe from being persecuted. And, you know, I thought this was, this was quite interesting. There is, I think, a romance component from what I remember. Um, it was really enjoyable though. And then finally, I mean, granted, this is only a small sample of the five star books I'm going to show you, but um, finally we have Foundry Side by Robert Jackson Bennett. Um, so this is sort of sci-fi fantasy, or yeah, sci-fi fantasy, um, where like the magic system is that people can, or at least the main character can like talk to the uh, advanced technology that's in this world. Um, and she is a thief um, and steals uh, something that's like super powerful. And so, you know, obviously people are after her and um, she joins up with some people to try to, you know, figure out what's going on um, and survive. Um, but yeah, so it was, it was really good. If you're looking for like a, a fun steampunky sci-fi fantasy book, I definitely recommend this. Okay, and then on to question two, <laughs> which is the best sequel you've read so far this year. And again, this was really hard for me to choose, so I have five to show you. Um, the first I'll show you is The Unbound Empire by Melissa Caruso. So this is book three in the Swords and Fire trilogy. Um, and I loved every single book of this trilogy, so I would highly recommend it. Um, it has a kind of unique fantasy or magic system um, where certain people, which are like the Falcons, is that right? Oh, I think so. Um, they you know, have like certain powers, like Zyra, one of the main characters, can control uh, fire. Um, but unfortunately in, in this, this world, um, or at least this particular empire, um, they're kept under control and basically like enslaved. Um, so that's not, you know, that's not great. But uh, the other main character, Amalia, who is like Zyra's um, kind of falconer. I, can't, I think it's falconer and falcons, where the falcons are the, the people who have the powers. Um, anyway, uh, there's, I mean, it's, it's kind of hard to catch you up on book three in a series, but you know, she, she tries to make things better. Um, she's really intelligent and is working to like change the laws to protect these falcons. Another book I will show you is Storm of Locusts by Rebecca Roanhorse. And this is book two in the Sixth World series. Yeah, which like, what a lovely cover. Um, but this is like an urban fantasy book series uh, where it's basically, you know, like post-apocalyptic. Um, there, it's set in like the, the Southwest, which is like really special to me because I'm originally from Arizona. So it's always nice to find books that like talk about places I know because you know, it's, it's just not as common in, in books that I read, but whenever there's something that I know, I'm like, oh my God, that's amazing. But anyway, Maggie is a main character is a monster hunter. Um, and there's, uh, oh shit, I don't know how much to explain to you guys in this, um, but this is really good. Um, and then another book I have is Storm Curse by Patricia Biggs, and I don't even know, this is like the 12th book in the um, Mercedes Thompson series, but I've loved this series. Um, every single book is great, but it's also an urban fantasy where the main character is like a coyote shapeshifter, and um, what even happened in this book? I think it's the Fae in this one. Sorry, it's been a while since I've read this. Um, the Fae in this one are like creating trouble, and she's basically like trying to figure out how to stop it and like what's going on and whatnot. Um, and then we have Protect the Prince by Jennifer Estep, which is the sequel to Kill the Queen. Um, I also loved this one. It, uh, you know, I don't want to spoil anything from the first book, but basically, I mean, it just continues on the story and has some, some fun developments, uh, a little more exploration of the magic, so this was really good. And then finally, Howling Dark by Christopher Rocchio, which is the sequel to Empire of Silence, um, which again, don't want to spoil book one, but this continues the story and kind of um, scales it up a bit. Like I would say Empire of Silence is like, you know, you get to know him when he's a little kid. It's a little more focused. And then Howling Dark, he's grown up and you know, you're in space and just the whole expanse of it. I mean, well, expands, shall we say. 
Um, but this was really good. I enjoyed it. Um, though admittedly, the first few pages, I was like, what the hell is going on? Um, so it took me a little bit to get it, uh, to like catch up and remember what was going on. But I really did enjoy this. Okay. Um, on to book three, new release you haven't read yet but want, The Twisted Trees, which is book four of the Song of the Shattered Sand series by Bradley P. Bolu? Bolu? Uh, I don't know, guys. Um, I should have looked that up before filming this video and just totally forgot. Uh, but this is also like a Arabian, Middle Eastern setting um, where the main character is basically trying to work her way through and kill all the 12 kings of Sherakai, which I think the first one is 12 kings in Sherakai. I, again, I could be totally mispronouncing these things. I don't know. That's the, that's the problem with fantasy books, you know? You like come across this word and you you think you do your best and that's kind of a guess, but um, I don't know. This is, a, this is a really fun book series if you're looking for, you know, something that's like Middle Eastern setting with kind of like a unique yeah, I don't know if it's really magic system, but unique premise. I would definitely recommend picking up this series. Um, all right, so book four, most anticipated release for the second half of the year, which I've got a ton, guys. There's so many books coming out this year that I want to read. Um, so I'll kind of go through a few of them. Uh, perhaps I'll do like a video breaking it down by month because there's like a ridiculous number that are coming out like September 3rd for some reason. Um, but yeah, so... I could go through that and, you know, let you know what I'm looking forward to and perhaps let you look forward to it as well. Um, but yeah, so a few things that I'm looking forward to, uh, The Dragon Republic by R.F. Kuang. Um, so that's the sequel to The Poppy War, which I'm sure, I mean, it's been all over booktube. Everybody loves it, but it's a grim, dark fantasy, um, and I'm very excited to see what happens. Um, another book I'm looking forward to is Turning Darkness into Light by Marie Brennan, and I think this is like a spinoff series of her Lady Trent series, uh, which is like, I mean, it's it's lovely. Here, I'll show you one of the books, the third one, A Voyage of the Basilisk. But, you know, we've got these like badass covers and fun like font. There's illustrations in here, like, um, but yeah, so this woman, uh, Isabella, Lady Trent, is, um, she's like a, a female scientist in this like, I don't know, Victorian sort of era world, uh, and she's studying dragons, and like, there's a five book series, it is finished, um, it's, it's really good, I really like it a lot, uh, anyway, so back to, back to anticipated releases, um, another one I'm looking forward to is Sapphire Flames by Alona Andrews, and this is, I think, maybe like the fourth, uh, book in, what is it even called, I like the Hidden Legacy, maybe, series, um, but this is definitely a paranormal romance. Uh, this is following from, I think it was like a trilogy. So the main character, I'm, it's been a while since I've read them, so I'm like totally blanking on names, but the main character's little sister, I think is going to be the main character in this book. Um, but you know, people have powers. It's like an urban fantasy, but also, you know, paranormal romance, heavy on the romance. Uh, some of that stuff gets steamy, but it's, it's really good. Um, Lona Andrews is I mean, it's a husband and wife team, but they write really well, and I've loved basically every single thing I've read by them. Um, another book I'm looking forward to is Dark Dawn by Jay Kristoff, and this is book three in the, shit, what is it even called? Nevernight Chronicles? Whatever. I don't even know where my book is. Um, no, oh, they're down here. Uh, I mean, this has been kind of floating around the booktube community as well, so I'm like, you probably know what it's about. Um, but I'm excited to see where Mia's story goes. Another book I'm looking forward to is The Unkindest Tide by Sh Shannon McGuire. Um, so this is the October Day series, maybe book 13, I'm not sure. Um, but Urban Fantasy, uh, October, also known as Toby, is, um, I think she starts off as like a changeling. And then as the series progresses, maybe this is a little bit of a spoiler, I don't know. She becomes more and more fae. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's, there's the fae or the, the main people, I guess. Um, that's going to be really good. I think that's also, that's one of the September 3 releases. So I'm excited for that. And then, oh, a couple more. The Harp of Kings by Juliette Marillier. Um, honestly, I can't remember what that's about, but she is fabulous as a writer. Um, oh, she is actually one of my favorite authors. I forgot to mention her in, in my previous video. Um, 
But she, it's like Celtic inspired high fantasy. Another one I'm looking forward to is Aurora Blazing by Jesse Mahalik, Mahalik, which is the sequel to Polaris Rising. Who I, and I think it follows the main character in this one's sister. Um, but I'm sure it's going to be great, you know, sci-fi romance. Sign me up. And then last one for the year um, that I'm going to talk about it at least is kind of a long shot, uh, which is Peace Talks by Jim Butcher. And I think it was yesterday or something. Um, he put out something on Twitter saying that he's actually done writing it, which like, thank God, I'm so excited for this book. It is the, I don't even know, again, what book this is in the Dresden Files, but it's going to be great. Hopefully it comes out I mean, fingers crossed it comes out by December. I mean, that, that may be a little bit of a, a long shot here because I don't know what the um, cover artist schedule is like. I don't know how long it takes to edit and, you know, publish things. But we'll see. We'll see. Um, question five is the biggest disappointment of this year. And sadly for me, this was Memory Called Empire by Arcady Martin. Um, this was supposed to be really great. And a lot of people, I know, really loved it. But I just thought it was really boring um it's like a murder mystery type thing with technology and I just I don't know was I was bored uh wasn't really feeling the main character all that much um didn't think it was all that funny so this was this was really sad for me <laughs> Uh, okay, and then question six is the biggest surprise of the year, um, which for me is The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. Um, so going into this, I've I kind of, you know, felt weird about reading romance because I'm like, oh, you know, like, don't want people to judge me. But then finally I was like, yeah, whatever. Who cares what I read? Um, but this is like a romance set in Hawaii, which I love Hawaii, so... That kind of, that was what got me on board. And I read like a little sample of it on Amazon. And I was like, this is actually really funny. Um, and I ended up loving it. Um, I thought it was hilarious. Uh, I really like was feeling the main characters. So I, I was, a, was very happy with how this romance turned out. Um, question seven, the favorite new author of the year debut or new to you. Um, I think I'm going to go with Christopher Rocchio. For the Empire of Silence, what what is this even called? What is this series called? The Sun Eater, I think is maybe what the yeah the Sun Eater. Mm, derp. Uh, these are just really great. I like like I said, uh, think of Name of the Wind type writing where it's just beautiful. You kind of simultaneously want to read through it really fast, but also savor it. So you know, it's a special special quality. So I was I was very excited too that these these books had that. Okay. Uh, question eight is newest fictional crush. Um, I don't really get fictional crushes, I guess, so I don't have a good answer to that. Um, so we'll just move on. So question nine, which is newest favorite character. Um, I, I mean, this is always a, a challenge, but I'm going to go with Irene Winters from the Invisible Library series. Um, she is, she's the main character, or one of the main characters, and she's just like a, a badass librarian who's like really intelligent, uh, kick-ass, just super smart, like I already said that. Um, but she's she's clever and like figures out ways to like overcome her obstacles and you know I, I just really appreciate that kind of heroine so you know go with that series. Um, question ten is book that made you cry. I'm gonna go with The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. Um, I mean, I guess it was like I just I just really felt the romance. <laughs> um, but you know there's there's some. Obviously, it's it's a romance. You know they're gonna end up together, but like uh, initially, there's like a oh, are they are they not? Um, and it was it was just kind of emotional. Um, so I, I guess I would I would say that one. Uh, question eleven, which is a a book that made you happy. I'm going to go with the Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. Um, this is book one in the Wayfarers series, and it's just like a really wholesome, feel good sci fi story. Um, all the characters were really nice. There's not really that much conflict, um, but just kind of like, a, I think it's like slice of life type type stories. Um, but this was really good. I highly enjoyed it. I have book two sitting over there that I really need to get to and just haven't yet. Um, okay, book 12 uh, is the most beautiful book you've bought or, God, I can't even read my notes, received uh -huh, this year. Um, I'm going to go with Kingdom of Copper by S.A. Chakraborty. Um, I mean, just look at it. This is this is book two in 
I don't even know what the series is called, but it's the sequel to City of Brass, um, which is like a, you know, Middle Eastern beautiful story where, you know, it's, it's like, it's shiny, it's fun, it's great. Uh, it, was, it was a very enjoyable read this year as well. Um, okay, and then question 13 is what books do you need to read by the end of the year? And like literally all of them. I need to get through this TBR pile because guys, it's been a little ridiculous lately. I just, I don't know, I've been, I went to a couple of library sales, picked up a whole bunch of books for like a dollar. Um, I placed some book outlet orders, which is always dangerous because I'm like, yeah, you know, that's only a few dollars. Let's just add that in too. Um, and now my TBR pile is a little out of control, so I'm gonna uh, try to try to tone that down a little bit. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so and you know I've got all these releases that I really want to get to, um, which again maybe I'll make a video going month by month. Anyway, I'm just kind of speculating and rambling, so I think that I'm going to wrap this up. Um, hope I have given you some some book recommendations here, and I will see you guys in my next video.